Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I recently purchased 6 new Walnut logs and now the question that remains is what do I turn them into? For those who wonders they cost me $450 and the shipping cost was 300 out of those unfortunately. But I'm just happy to have more material to work with. So what to make? I knew I wanted to create something Christmas inspired. I wrote down a few themes and then figured out the main subject or animal or bird. And what about an owl mixed with a deer? Well, just not that way. What about an owl with antlers then? I know it's not something new and unique, but I wanted to try to give my take on it, so let's get down to designing. Here are the four drafts I came up with. To be honest, it was very tricky to pick which one to continue with, but I eventually ended up picking the fourth one. So let's make two more redefined versions of that one, and then we move on to the final design. I decided that this was the design I would base the final drawing on because of its nice flow of energy and elegance. So let's make the final design. So after about 10 hours of designing, I have arrived at the final design. I printed out some references. I'm ready to go into the workshop and make this. I might make the antlers a little bit bigger. So the first thing I'm going to do is carve out the owl and then I will carve out the antlers separately and maybe in a brighter color. Finally, I enter the workshop. It is hard for me to decide whether I like carving or drawing the most. I for sure use more time carving than I do drawing, but one of my goals for 2024 is to even out those two. My belief is that practicing drawing helps a lot with the sculpting and also comes in really handy when you have a great idea in your mind that you want to capture on paper. As you may have noticed, I have adopted kind of a laid back approach to my carvings where I'm not too focused on really accurate measurements. I do this to keep the process loose and also because I naturally tend to stray away from the original design as I go along. To see how the colors of the log will end up after I oil it, I gently wet it with some water. This log doesn't seem to have much color but I'm hoping that there will be some more interesting contrast further into the core of the log. Through the years I have picked up a few skills here and there which has ultimately pushed my business to where it is today. And what I have learned is just having a little bit of experience with a skill can turn into something beautiful. That brings us to Skillshare, which is this video's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. It has classes led by industry pros, which lets you go from passion to paycheck. Skillshare will help you do this through courses like social media marketing, opening your first Etsy shop, increasing your productivity with AI tools, and so much more. You can also discuss the classes with other people taking it and cheer each other on. 
I found a learning path called Graphic Design Basics, start exploring and expressing, to be both inspiring and valuable. Since I have been thinking about upping my brand game for my business, I learned about the basics of what makes a great design and how to use fundamentals to increase the impact of my work. Skillshare also has a ZBrush for beginners class, which I'm looking forward to take. The classes are broken down to bite-sized lessons, which makes them both fun and encouraging. There's a ton of other great classes on Skillshare to pick from, which can help you start your side hustle. The first 500 people signing up using my link in the description will get Skillshare for one month free to watch as many classes as you want. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring and supporting my small business. Now back to this gigantic Owl Christmas ornament project. My bandsaw seemed to have seen better days, but for this log perhaps the biggest problem was that the surface of the block was not completely straight, which made the saw blade pinch a lot. I was also starting to get a little bit worried about the cracks I saw in the log, and if they would be stable enough in the end result. Everything seemed fine except from this piece between two long cracks. I will have to stabilize them later in the video, somehow. My first thought was to add epoxy behind it, to make it stop wiggle then add a few bowtie inlays on both sides. It is after all long overdue that I start making those bowtie inlays along the longest cracks in my sculptures. And by using a different color on them, it can actually enhance the look of the sculpture. I'm often mentioning that making a sculpture like this comes with a lot of doubt, and this one was no exception. At this stage, I really did not see the owl within the wood at all. When this happens, I try to think, in what area can I safely remove wood and still preserve the owl within? And at the same time, I simplify every shape. The head is a sphere, the neck is a cone-like shape, and so on. I also got a little bit confused, since the cuts I made on the bandsaw was not symmetrical. If I had been able to make them symmetrical, it would have become a lot easier, so I will keep that in my mind for the next project, which I can reveal might involve a turtle. So I may have been a little bit overconfident with the carving, and as you can see, it doesn't really match the design much at all right now. So what I need to do now is uh, spend some time to look at the design and try to correct the carving, and then I will get back to you and show you how the changes are looking. So the main problem I identified was that the eyes was too large, too far apart, and also not sitting high enough on the face. My opinion is that messing up the eyes is messing up the sculpture, so I do spend a lot of time trying to find both the right proportions of them, and equally as important, the spirit and emotion within them. I want to have an attachment to my sculptures after I have made them, and I do this by trying to find some kind of soul and give them life through their expression. Kai, which is the otter I made in a seashell, may be the sculpture which I am the most attached to, since I feel like I capture the adventurous, confident look in his face as he sails the seven seas. I do not think I will have much of a problem parting with him, however, since I think that the person ending up owning him will cherish him just as much as I do. And I hope my sculptures can bring some joy and meaning to those they end up staying at. So day 4 of carving, I've spent a lot of time on the eyes, and uh, now it is time to decide where to add the details. And I think that it will be best to have details here, on the bottom of this one, uh, here, and uh, here and perhaps some around the face as well, but I'm not sure. So let's start with uh, this one. The eyes still need some work, but at this stage of the carving I can lower my shoulders a little bit and focus more on having fun deciding where to add details and so on. And also I'm very excited about how the feathers going up above the head is going to look. I feel like it will kind of act like a crown or a strong statement. It was because of this that I decided to give her the title Queen of Winter since I feel like she started looking graceful and with a hint of royalty. Perhaps I should write a children's book about her next year. That would be a fun project. I used to love adventurous stories myself when I was a child. And I still do. In my previous video I said that I wanted to start making a few drawings for every video, and I'm happy to show you the result of that idea. I plan to sell prints in my shop starting from January, and I will be announcing it in that video, which I'm looking very much forward to. The thick feathery details on the neck turn out better than expected. I think it gives a warm and calm feeling to it, which matches the look I was going for. A lot of my decisions comes from previous experience now, and it feels great to be able to pull up elements from other sculptures that worked well and use them in current ones. It's like a chest of tools that keep growing, bit by bit. I want to mention that I do have quite a lot of problems with burning the wood when I'm working with a fine diamond burr. This happens since walnut is such a hard wood, and particularly when I'm working on an end grain area. Lowering the RPM does help some, and also trying not to apply too much pressure when carving.
Time for antlers, which I have been looking forward to. I made two designs, but it was pretty easy to decide which one to go for, since the discarded one had too much of a bat vibe to them. I had to use an entire new log to find suitable wood for antlers, but it was not that hard of a decision. The reason is that I value being able to continue with the project a lot more than scratching my head over an issue for too long trying to find the perfect solution, which can be quite the road bump for my motivation. I did have some grand plans to make the antlers almost twice the size as this, but I played around with it in Photoshop and the size I eventually went for just seemed a lot better. If you want to see some awesome antlers, go check out the now extinct giant Irish deer. It truly looks like a mythical creature. Using the bandsaw to start finding the right curves was really helpful. I also selected a patch of wood that had the most color in it. Unfortunately, there was a huge inclusion in one of the antlers. The colors around it was amazing, so I decided to sacrifice a little bit of the curve I was going for to see if I could still use the piece of wood for the project. Fortunately, I was able to remove all of it and still have enough wood to make the antlers the way I wanted them to look. Just some finishing touches now and all of the carving has been completed. And I did put off finishing the beak for a long time, since I did not want to mess it up. But drawing an invisible line from the eyes to the beak helped, since it has that angle. I also played around a little bit with whether or not I should give her irises, but I did not. Perhaps this was a mistake. However, I could go back and change this later. So just quickly stabilize this loose piece with epoxy. I must say that I was not very confident in this solution, and I immediately broke the bond of epoxy when I attached the old to my clamps again, so it was a complete fail. to say that I never cut any corners, but in this case I'm afraid I will have to. The loose piece was just too unstable and I also think it would be a good thing for me to go through with the repair like this just as a learning experience. The biggest obstacle with this repair was not to find a matching wood for the cut, but to make both sides of the repair as flat as possible. I was able to do this to a degree where it at least created a strong bond for the wood glue. I was kind of nervous at this point whether or not the repair would become a success. So when I returned a few hours later I felt more at ease after seeing that things did look alright. As you can see there is still a small gap on one side, but I'm very confident that the block is safely secured to the sculpture. Now I just need to grind away the excess wood and figure out how I want the base to look. I am at this point starting to look forward to make my next design, but at the same time I'm making sure to enjoy the thing I'm doing in the moment. For me that is really a thing that takes practice, but practicing does seem to work. For spots I cannot reach with a power tool, I often start with 80 grit sandpaper, then I follow the steps all the way to 400 for a smooth finish. The project is coming to an end and I want to thank you all for watching and supporting me. What remains now is oiling the sculpture. I cannot wait to see you again in January when I come up with another funny sculpture concept.
I started this year with one main goal, to spend as much time as I could, without pushing myself too hard, making as many sculptures as possible. I'm very happy to say that I have been able to follow this plan, and consistency has been a lot more important than hard work. I have also made sure to be fair to myself, and making sure to celebrate and soak in my accomplishments. The plan was to make 12 sculptures this size, but that all changed when I got the opportunity to purchase a larger log, and my sculptures all of a sudden became a lot bigger. Starting with Amodius, which I have to admit might become a little bit hard to part with. We share a special bond. Making sculptures this size is probably the biggest surprise to me this year, and it might just become one of the largest pillars in my future art journey. I have not sold any sculptures yet, which can make me doubt the path I have chosen, because it hasn't really materialized yet. It's like a lot of things in life where you do the work and the reward comes later. But this changes in spring next year when I will have my first exhibition, and I'm looking forward to share the journey where I do the preparations for exhibition in my upcoming videos. If I think about something I could have done differently this year, it must have been to keep the workshop and the office a little bit more clean. As you may have noticed, my workshop isn't the cleanest or most organized, and I don't want to think about how much time I have spent looking for a pencil. Probably enough time to produce an entire extra sculpture. And having everything more organized and orderly will probably let my mind wander more freely and uh, come up with more cool concepts and uh, a clearer path ahead. So yeah, I did it. I was able to follow my plan. Thank you all for motivating me along the way. There has been a lot of times this year where a comment or someone reaching out has really shifted my mindset in a positive way and uh, helped me do my best possible work. Now I will have a Christmas vacation where I want to spend a lot of time outdoors chasing magic. So be kind to yourself, I will try my best to come up with an awesome video for you in January. And now one thing remains. 